Hello everyone, this is Soviet Russian Bear and boy oh boy, we live in interesting times, uh, strange times should I say, with strange conflicts, uh, well I'm not even talking about Ukraine, no, I'm talking about Armenia and Azerbaijan, the third iteration of uh, Karabakh uh, conflict, uh, one day of war and uh, Azerbaijan celebrates victory. But uh, the thing about it, what makes it strange is uh, that Armenia, Armenian army didn't even show up to the battle. <laughs> but for some reason, the Armenian leadership decided that it's the Russian army who should fight their wars. Where did they get this idea from? I don't know. <laughs> and I don't want to know, honestly. But let's go to the most recent conflict, like the escalation between Israel and Palestine again. Uh, well, this conflict just completely destroys all familiar patterns of war. Uh, numerous groups of Palestinian fighters took over entire cities. Uh, they killed people, they took hostages, they destroyed the idea of uh, equipment and captured their soldiers. Uh, what is this? It's too big for a terror act and uh, too small for a full-scale invasion. A massive attack? Mm, well, I think we see a war of a, new, of a new generation unfolding in front of our eyes. Um, if we remember the America's uh, shock and awe doctrine, uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with this, uh, but uh, in a nutshell, the shock and awe doctrine is about, uh, well, first, a propaganda campaign against uh, a weaker foe. Uh, second, Air Force, the US Air Force flies in and the US Tomahawks fly in and they just bomb the country to a Stone Age. And the third is, uh, after the country is bombed to the Stone Age, <laughs> the, in, the ground invasion force rolls in and crushes every single remnant of resistance. And the country is subjugated. In this doctrine, the most technologically advanced and well-equipped military wins the war. However, the Israeli, the Hamas attack on Israel completely defies this. Uh, it shows the futility of high technology, like the Merkava 4, one of the most well-protected tanks, gets set on fire by one two thousand dollar homemade drones yes and the the israeli intelligence service mossad uh, who i'm sure has its agents operating in the gaza strip i don't know it has failed well and the palestinians they are extremely well coordinated But the, the Iron Dome system of Israel, it failed to protect the Israeli cities from homemade rockets, Palestinian homemade rockets. Oh, and the Guardian British media outlet draws attention to the fact that over the past two years, more than 18,000 permits to work for the residents of the Gaza Strip have been issued in Israel. Such a policy was designed to appease the Palestinians and prevent large-scale terrorist attacks. In fact, it played against Israel. The Palestinians who have preserved their loyalty could well help the Hamas fighters to attack. So, what is needed for a successful attack in this day and age? Well, first, a good intel. It will provide the X-factor, the element of surprise. Uh, second, an abundance of cheap weaponry that can be purchased at black market and through other illegal channels. And can you guess who is the greatest contributor for the black market of weaponry today? Oh yeah, that's right, a country southwest of Russia, which is run by a comedian. And finally, third, extremely mobile, highly mobile fighter sabotage groups and their fifth column within the attacked country. So with this arsenal, even a poor, a technologically inferior country can inflict serious damage upon their rich and technologically advanced foe. 
and of course brutality on both sides yes the, ad the another advantage of a poor country is that the human life costs nothing um, yes and just look at ukraine of course and just anyway war is hell i hope you and your family can avoid a war this has been Soviet Russian Bear. Peace, love, and prosperity. Das wieder.